And with that, we are now crossing over to our studios in Oshakati with Denver Kisting, who will be talking to the Minister of Industrialization and Trade. A very good evening, Denver. Thank you very much, Morris. Now, the year 2020, some call it a fearful year, is drawing to a close. It has been a year marred with disruptions and economic turbulences following the outbreak of COVID-19, and Namibia certainly is no exception. To speak about the year that was, I'm joined in studio this evening by the Minister of Industrialization and Trade, Lucia Ipumbu. Good evening, ma'am, and thank you very much for making time. Good evening, Denver, and good evening to the viewers out there. Ma'am, now obviously the year 2020 has been all that we've witnessed, a very unpleasant year indeed. But first of all, please provide us with an overview on how we performed in terms of trade, both domestically as well as internationally. From the trade perspective, both at the domestic level and at an international level, it has not been favorable. You know, this is compounding on already what we had, the economic downturn for the past three years, and then of course the drought that we have battled for the past two years. And there arrived COVID in March, which worsened the situation. And if we look at the trade statistics, the economy at the global level would have contracted by four to five percent. In the, the domestic level, we have seen a, a trade deficit. Uh, but if we are to take the statistics and compare with the same period uh, the last year, we, we, we are a little bit be behind with uh, just a 0.7 percent. But in actual uh, trade activities have slowed down because of the measures that we put in place in terms of lockdown and all other measures that were aimed at, at uh, containing the pandemic and not necessarily to hem the business operations, to a certain extent have impacted on our trade activities. But the, the figures, as, as we, we are getting them from the Bank of Namibia, there, there is a prospect of, of the growth of, uh, by 1.8% in the first quarter of next year. All things being equal, of course. Of course. Uh, looking at the wave and how the pandemic is evolving, one cannot really be sure of whether that will be realized. Very well, ma'am. Now, when COVID-19 hit Namibia in March, our index cases were reported on the 13th of March. In fact, we witnessed a loss of income and there were also business um, disruptions. Talk to us about the impact on the economy as a whole and trade as far as those are concerned. The impact was huge. If we look at the business activities in general, uh, a number of businesses, and let me say 50% of the businesses were operating at half level than the, the normal level of, 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 of operations, which already have an indication of a low income and a low output because the value chains have reduced because of a, a number of employees that they were expected to be on production. Mm. And of course, the demand for consumables and products have also slowed down because uh, sometimes the buying power, the, the, the income have reduced to, to a certain extent. And also measures that were put in place and you know, the fear, the general fear from the community, because uh, not everybody would want to go buy this and that that he can afford to do at home. And, and if you look at the trade at the other level, at the international level, especially uh, the minerals and all other products that we export, the, the traffic in terms of uh, air traffic have slowed down, the shipments have slowed down. That also impacted on the demand and, and our trade uh, levels and the trade balances with the, uh, the global community at large. Thank you very much. In terms of support, we saw the ministry step in and help capacitate SMEs to, amongst others, produce masks locally. What is the situation at the moment and what are the prospects of more support in the future? If there is one good thing that we have learned as a lesson from this pandemic is to improve on our production capacity. Of course, we were able to, in, in, a, in, in a record time, produce face masks locally made for uh, our vulnerables and uh, and, and, and uh, other categories that would not afford to buy for themselves in an amount of 413,000 that were distributed to those vulnerable categories. And we continue to produce more, but we have also improved on production of sanitizer and food production in general. Mm. We, we have reached out to the retailers, especially f uh, to, to source from the horticulture industry, their produce to make sure that they don't go to waste and they have a market. 
all those uh, improvements, we, as I said, now we, we, we have recorded about 60% of, uh, of uh, retailer sourcing from the local producers. And, and in, in terms of manufacturing, we, we are making inroads in, in, in manufacturing. Even surgical masks, we have acquired the, the technology, the 3D printers. We have undergone some trainings to, to capacitate, to, to produce and manufacture locally the personal protective gears. And we are moving into pharmaceuticals as well because we need to be able to, to sell sustainable. And if we look at the food production, which is, is, a, is a agriculture sector and the agro-processing component, which need more strengthening, Thank I, th you. I think we have to, to do more. Thank you very much, ma'am. Now, despite the prevailing uncertainty, one needs to prepare and plan for the future. What is your ministry's recovery plan entail? The ministry, together with all other economic sectors, ministry ha have uh, a committee that uh, on a regular basis sits and, and uh, collect the data and uh, makes uh, some kind of research. Uh, from the ministry's perspective, we have uh, launched a con consultation process. By now, we have consulted five regions and we, we are aiming to, to, to consult the remaining ones by February so that when we start the new quarter, which starts in April, we would have that plan consolidated. But there are plans, bits and pieces, that still need to be consolidated by the Economic COVID Committee, which, which is a cluster consisting of ministers of economic. Unfortunately, we have entered the second wave of infections. And today, in fact, we've reached another record 595 new confirmed cases of COVID-19 announced in the country. How will this second wave impact the recovery plan? The second wave will definitely have a negative uh, impact on the recovery plan because uh, uh, the plan as you, you develop it, it, it's in response to the situation that you are in for the time being. But we, we do not know how far the second wave will take us in terms of its involvement. What other measures we, we may take going forward, which might have an impact on the economy in general, which at the end of the day would require us to again revisit the, the, the plan that we have and the, the remodernize. I, I think as time evolving and as we are going, we, we are also watching and, and uh, uh, reviewing whatever we have done to, 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 to look at the impactful response that we need because we, we don't know where the, the second wave is taking us and we don't know whether there will be a third wave coming along. Mm. And, and, and as we, we, we trade with the international community, you must understand it have already impacted our, our trade uh, 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 agreements and trade exchange of commodities and goods, especially with the EU, Thank with you. China, who are our major trading partners. Thank you very much, ma'am. In conclusion, just your brief message mm. to those uh, traders who might be trading or not during this time. To the traders, the message I have is that we must adhere to the regulations that are in place. Nobody has put the regulations to harm any business operations or to slow down the economy, but it's to protect the human lives, mm. which matters the most. If you don't have people, you would not be able to trade. So we must adhere as much as we know that the measures to a certain extent are, are not favorable. It's better to have you alive, then you will be able to trade and recover in the future than to die of COVID and not be able to trade at all. Thank you very much for your time, ma'am. The last time I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a prosperous uh, 2021, which we believe will be better than 2020. Thank you very much and one to you too. Thank you, thank you, Denver, and to the viewers out there. Lucia Ipumbu, the Minister of Industrialization and Trade. Morris, it's over to you. Thank you very much, Denver. Very insightful uh, discussion there. Now, I still